Thank you for tuning in. I'm Gil Yehuda, and today I'd like to share some ideas about InnerSource that I hope will help you in your InnerSource work. Thank you to the InnerSource Commons team for inviting me to speak. I get a ton of value from being part of this community, and I hope you do too. A bit about me. My professional focus has been on open source more than inner source. That being said, inner source is inspired by open source. It's often said that inner source is the application of open source practices inside an organization. So I hope to offer some insight from that angle. Before I got into open source, I focused on workplace collaboration and knowledge management. We face similar challenges. Companies were inspired by information sharing on the internet and wanted to see the same take place on the intranet. Internet search pointed you to helpful information, often the right answer right away. We hoped the same would be true for searching within your intranet. We were inspired by how Wikipedia allowed you to get information about almost anything. We hoped that we can create a Workipedia that did the same for information inside the company. As you know, these didn't work out so well. It's very hard to find information within a large workplace. It's easier to find information on the internet. Ironic, isn't it? There's less information inside your company than in the rest of the world, and workplace efficiency translates to profitability. And yet, things that work well on the internet don't work as well inside a company. At that time, I shared with my clients, they needed to, they needed to address three issues. One, if I wanted to share information, where should I put it so that others would find it? Two, if I wanted to find information shared for me to find, where should I look? And three, if I needed to find an expert, someone who could share information that maybe they didn't yet share, but I needed to find out, who can I ask? Solve these first. And we had mixed success. I came back to open source as my professional focus and notice that these three questions are answered. I can share my code on GitHub for you to find. I can find code shared on GitHub for me to use. And I can find people there or in open source communities that are subject matter experts. I don't expect them to respond to my every request, but maybe they'll help if I act nicely and if the question helps move the community forward. So that's great for open source. When it comes to information sharing inside a company, we often have too many places to store, share, or hide content. This poses a challenge for knowledge-based collaboration. But sharing code should be easier. Most of us store our code in a source code management tool, often a product that starts with Git or Bit. Given that, collaborative sharing of code in our source should be easier. I know where to put code I want you to see, I can see code you shared, and I can associate content with the author and reach out directly if I have questions. Yet InnerSource is not simple. You know that it takes more than the mechanics of sharing. It also takes culture. But what is culture? If you ask someone what's the culture like at your company, they often say something like, oh, it's good if they like working there, or it's bad if they don't. But culture means more than do you like your job. After all, how does liking your job affect inner source outcomes? In 2018, at an inner source day, my colleague Ashley Wolf and I presented to this community and highlighted three facets that make open source work. If you have these facets in your project, you are on the road to, the road to success. These are transparency, symmetry, and non-excludability. Transparency means that you can see my code and my progress. Symmetry means that if I can do something, then you can too. Non-excludability is the related idea that anyone can participate. In open source, I can't exclude you from using my code or from improving it. Now, in reality, open source projects have governance models that allow committers to do things that non-committers can't, but those only apply to a project. You can always fork a project, and many do. And true, not all open source projects are welcoming to newcomers, and this is a real problem. But again, you can fork a project and make it as great as you wish it to be. At least the system is designed to allow that. Our observation was that these facets were unlike the conversations we found within most workplaces. Let's contrast. In open source, participation is voluntary. 
But inside the workplace, engineers are assigned to a project as their job. In open source, anyone can compete with your project, and doing so is one of the best ways to improve what's in open source. In the workplace, we don't often like seeing one team compete with another team in the same group. It causes internal strife. In open source, the key to success is to maximize cooperation. In the workplace, management isn't always focused on cooperation. They focus on getting things done on time, on budget, to spec, and with minimal distraction. That's right. Part of their job is to keep the distractions away from a project. They might see InnerSource as a project risk. So how do you operate with open source practices if the very things that make open source work are unlike the practices within a corporate environment? At that time, we suggested that your inner source program focuses on the three facets that make workplace projects work. Speed to project completion, minimization of project risk, and ensuring a sense of control over the outcomes. If you could show that inner source helps makes things faster, lowers risk, and improves controls, then you have a path that works within the workplace. We shared examples. That was a few years ago. Much has changed. New jobs, different companies. That company changed hands. Through these changes and various mergers and exposures to company behaviors, I came to realize just how much the corporate culture plays a role in inner source success. So we're back to that question. When people ask me what corporate culture was, I'd say it's a collection of expected behaviors given common situations. Last year, I came across a better answer, the Westrom typology of corporate culture. I suggest you read about it too. Ron Westrom classified organizations into three simple groups. It's obviously too simple to be a comprehensive study of corporate culture, but the groupings are useful since they're distinct and easy to relate to if you've worked at a few places. Imagine the scenario that you came up with a great idea at work. You found a way to solve a problem, a way to make money, to improve some complicated process, really any idea that's not directly related to what you do for a living. Let's say it's a better way to do expense reporting. Westrom's model describes three types of experiences that you might have when posing this idea. At a company with a solutions mindset, someone would listen to your idea. If it sounded reasonable, they'd connect you with others who'd want to hear about it. Maybe the company's already working on it. Maybe they already thought of the idea and can't implement it for a very good reason. Maybe it's a great idea and someone suggests a proof of concept to see if the idea has legs. Maybe something changes. Maybe not. But someone will thank you for raising the idea and you feel great about the process. Your management appreciates the effort. At some companies, however, the experience is quite the opposite. You're told to swim in your lane, keep your nose out of other people's business. Since when do you get to tell our finance people how to run their expense reporting? Do your job, that's your job. Telling other people how to do theirs just gets them upset since it shows them up. No one asked you for your ideas and don't even think about going over my head to push your agenda. Two very different responses. One is solution seeking, the other is toxic. But there's a third response, and it's rather common at large in older organizations. You get told that your idea is very valuable to the company. In fact, we have a program that collects good ideas. You have to log into the idea portal and fill out a form detailing the idea. You're then asked to acknowledge that the company owns your idea. You are forbidden from sharing it with someone outside the company. The company may seek a patent on the idea, and as a condition of employment, you will assist the company to pursue it even after you leave the company. Submitting an idea does not guarantee that the company will follow up on it. Thank you for using the idea portal. Then you get an email thanking you for the idea. Your department chief of staff gets notified of the update and gets notified and gets to update the OKRs since the department committed to having a certain number of ideas submitted to the portal, and your idea helps make the quota. So you, you get another thank you note and you're really happy. And yet you get no sense that anyone's going to take the time to read it. You work in a bureaucracy. There's a process for everything, but nothing really changes. Westrom points to these three organization types as being a critical way to assess how to make things happen. In a solutions-oriented company, you who advocate for inner source should follow the advice I shared years ago. Show the company how to save time, reduce risk, increase control, and that some of the inner source patterns do exactly that. At a taxa company, 
I don't think you'll succeed. Maybe you'll have to run an inner source process under the radar with your personal computers, leveraging a private set of repos that your team and other engineering teams work on, but that the company doesn't know anything about. Not ideal. What about the bureaucratic company? Can inner source succeed and what does it take to make it work? Given the prevalence of such organizations, that's my focus these days. I think the best bet is to work within the context of the company culture. In other words, create the bureaucratic structures that the company expects, but do so in ways that support inner source outcomes. I'm working on a pattern that I'd encourage you to read. It's in the inner source commons GitHub account. Please help improve it or come up with something better. I think we need some clever ideas. So here's my takeaway. Inner source is the application of open source practices within a company. My experience tells me it's not so simple. Working on the internet feels easier to me than working in the workplace. Search works better, collaboration is easier. Yes, the internet has dark corners, but as a structure, it's designed for getting things done. The intranet, the workplace, is ironically harder. Finding, sharing, and collaborating on anything, even code, can be harder. You'd think otherwise. So if you ask me, I'd say running an inner source program office can be much harder than running an open source program office. So kudos to this community for taking on a very big challenge. Why is this so hard? Companies have different philosophies about the value of source code and the notion of control. Whereas solution focused companies look for the best outcomes, taxa companies get mired in unhealthy debates about ownership and control. Bureaucratic companies get caught up on processes and policies. Remember, it might be explicitly against policy to engage in some inner source behaviors. If that's the case at your company, you'll need to address that. A word of advice here. It's not so easy to change company culture. Often history plays a hidden role. By inquiring about the current behaviors, you might find out about a story that sheds light on the resistance. I ran into a case where a team wanted to implement some inner source behaviors, but people on the team got remarkably defensive about it. They learned, I learned, that they had a bad experience where engineers dumped bad code in the repos and walked away. So they associated inner source with a problem, not a solution. So we needed to reframe the conversation. We reminded ourselves and the engineering team, we are not there to make inner source work for the engineering team. We are there to help the engineering team work better. That's gonna take a review of contribution processes, testing processes, branch management conventions, and trust building. Call that inner source, call that engineering excellence, whatever you call it, it has to show deference to the company culture and be framed appropriately. I believe that when you bring open source behaviors to the workplace environment, you'll face these issues too. And I hope this framing helps you prepare and succeed. With that, I thank you for your time and your attention. I hope to hear from you on LinkedIn, Twitter, or the InnerSource Commons Slack group. And if you're looking to work at a company that's transforming and that's creating a home for thoughtful and solution-minded tech folks, engineers, and architects, let me know. Check out usbank.com careers to see the roles we have published. Maybe the key to our success is the opportunity to work with you. It's worth a conversation. Thanks again.